This is a short video on some pre-reading activities. Remember, a pre-reading activity is short. It's used to introduce students to the story, and it should be a way to get them ready to read the story. Our goal is to give them just enough, ideally, so that they can read themselves. Here are 11 that we will go over. These are also in the Johnson textbook. Number one is a very simple, a story preview, which is like a movie preview. Read to find out what happens when. You're giving them just a taste with kind of a hook. And remember, pre-reading activities should always make the connection between the story. You'll get them ready to learn. Here's a simple pre-reading story preview for chapters one and two. Notice at the end, after reading, think of a time and place uh, in your life that this story brought you. All right, so it kind of just gives us a brief overview and sets the hook or makes the connection. The second one is a story map. Story maps come in a variety of forms. It is anything that shows a visual display of the story. It can come like that story map where you simply list the characters, etc. So students can see up front the general structure of the story. Here's a different sort of story map where you list the main events in each chapter. And here we're doing just two chapters of A Bridge to Terabithia. The thing I like about this form then, you can use it as a pre-reading activity to explain the general events that are going to happen in the story, give them a structure so they know exactly what's going to happen then as a post-reading story that they can list different activities or different things to put in each one of these bubbles. They can add to it. Taken from a reading lesson plan, you could have an actual literal map that shows the geographical outline. And again, do a Google search, press story map, or reading instruction story map and you'll come up with lots of different things. The third one is to introduce students to vocabulary words, new words that they may find in the story. Always try to show them in the context of a sentence or with younger readers with a picture to make it as visual as possible. You could teach important concepts. And again, if you're reading about frogs, expository text, you give them some information about frogs. Activate background knowledge or make personal connections. This may be for older readers, but try to link things in their lives experience. Remember how blah, 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 blah? Well, this story is about that. Who can think of a time when they, let's list some ideas that you have, and then you make the personal connection. When have you? Set the purpose. This is a story about blank. Read to find out what happens. Or see if you can read to see what is with expository text. Introduce characters and plot. This is kind of similar or could be the same as a story map. In this story, there are three Characters, they are blah, blah, blah. And this story, so-and-so has a problem. Let's read to see what finds out what happens. Always try to make it as visual as possible. You could have a writing prompt related to the story. If it's a story about a problem, have students write, write one sentence down about when you had a problem. They take a couple minutes, write it down in their journal. You go around the room and share. All right, today we are going to write a story about Henry who has a problem. All right, keep it short because the goal is to, to, in, to introduce the story. Predicting. What do you know about? You could read part of the story and predict what do you think will happen when? Or you could look at the pictures. What do you think this is about? Who do you think is in this story? You can use a predictogram. This is a little bit more formal. It provides structure. Uh, this is a visual organizer 
read the first part and stop. What do you think will happen next? A prediction is based on clues, so together you list some clues, and a prediction is a guess based on clues. Then they write their prediction. That's a predictogram. It's a graphic organizer to organize thinking. Story grammar. We mentioned it's a form of a story map. Sometimes it's called story grammar. Each story has a grammar. It has these certain things. Adopt and adapt this as you see fit. Some people don't include all of these. I myself, when I'm doing it, I like to just include the title, the characters, and maybe a problem and a setting. I like to keep it simple. Story grammar, again, do that a Google search, story grammar, story map. They are kind of the same, but technically story grammar is a little different. Story map is any visual representation. Story grammar is when it talks about setting, place, all these things. And again, I, used, I usually just like to do characters, problems, and setting. Adopt and adapt. Adopt and adapt. And that is our little introduction to pre-reading activities.